Hello everyone, welcome to the second last session of the day and of course the second last session of the week. I want to congratulate all of us for making it this far. We had a journey, it would have, it, the journey was supposed to have taken us five days. Some people have fallen off but the strongest have survived up to now. So congratulations. Um, my name is Achien Kokonya, I'm a child protection specialist with the Alliance and uh, mine is simple, I'm here to pave the way for eight great women who are going to discuss uh, what they do and what they plan on doing, of course, with your support. Um, you have a very, very difficult choice uh, between four very, very important areas of child protection. One is learning and development, working group, children associated with armed forces and armed, uh, armed forces and armed group task force, family strengthening task force and prevention initiative 2019 to 2020. They will provide us an update. You have a difficult choice. You have a difficult choice, but uh, we allow them to come uh, briefly tell us what they do and then um, you will have to make that choice after about 15 minutes. So, welcome, bienvenue, bienvenido, karibuni sana, ahlan wa sahlan. Um, we will go, uh, we'll follow the order that is in the program. So, um, first and foremost, we are going to listen to learning and development and I will not pronounce second names for fear of biting my tongue. So, uh, <laughs> Welcome, Elena and Anita. Hi, everyone. And uh, thanks, Acheng, for the lovely introduction. And um, Anita, my colleague, is here with us. Um, I'll try to give a flavor of what is to expect, like if you join us in the Learning and Developing Working Group update. So I'm going to share my screen real quickly. If you can just give me a second, sorry, I'm struggling with technology today. It seems to be the flavor of the day. Here we go, it should be up on your screen now. So over the course of um, the last four days, I think we have seen that capacity building has been brought up in a lot of the discussions. And a vivid interest that and a need to prioritize this part of the work has been confirmed yesterday, as is shown in this poll um, that was taken yesterday afternoon towards the end of the day, where you can see that a capacity building came a close, close second to multi-sectoral integration, which was your first of the five prioritized teams. And close to us, child participation and the localization and centrality of protections. Um, furthermore, capacity building is certainly connected to all of these teams, but I'll just give a couple of examples. So, so for look in term, with localization in terms of uh, the empowerment, we of local actors being these governments, communities, frontline workers, that uh, we need to constantly build the skills, attitudes, behaviors of. Uh, then uh, in terms of cross-sectoral programming to really ensure that child protection risks are appropriately identified and mitigation measures duly put in place if we actually build the capacity of colleagues in these other sectors appropriately. The importance of capacity building, it's in ensuring the quality of services that we deliver for children and for their families, I think is undeniable. But yet too often capacity building is the first line that's being scrapped when you are actually reviewing a budget and adjusting or making adjustments for your donors. 
COVID-19, as El Patas realized more than an, any other emergency before, that we need to be ready for change. And capacity building and actually can help us be ready for that change. So what do we do at the Learning and Development Working Group to facilitate all of this happening? Well, we try or we strive to provide technical advice on capacity building initiatives, design, and contextualization measuring success and outcomes of capacity building initiatives so that we can constantly do better, development of capacity building tools and materials as you have seen through and um, proposed through these days with the MOOC, the competency framework, capacity gaps analysis or support of capacity gaps analysis that can inform capacity building strategies and hopefully and finally developing relationships with uh, um, training institutions uh, and universities so if you, you want to hear more about what we do um, please come join us um, in our group thank you very much everyone thank you elena um, she is saying that capacity building is the line that is usually the first to be scrapped off when funding is limited. Um, you welcome to that group to try and help them um, be able to retain that line in the budget. Thank you. Um, next, we move to children associated with armed, group, armed, armed forces and armed groups. Kindly welcome Bridget and Sandra. Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen um, real quick. And that's all right. I hope you can see it. Yes, you can. All right. Excellent. So hi everyone, my name is Sandra Mignon and I'm working with Plan International as a CAFAG advisor. I'm also co-leading the task force on CAFAG with UNICEF. So you may wonder, what is this strange acronym? Is this a new brand of shampoo? Well, it's actually a long acronym that stands for Children Associated with Armed Forces and Armed Groups. So not all boys and girls carry weapons and fight. Some play other roles, such as porters, messengers, cooks, wives, or sexual slaves. CAFAC face a lot of challenges. Some children are forced to enroll, while others are coerced by factors such as the poverty, the lack of education opportunities, the need for protection, or family pressure. It's rarely one, but rather multiple factors combined that influence a child's decision to join an armed group. The impact of enrollment on children varies a lot. Some children may perceive enrollment as an empowering experience, while other children may be severely affected. Most of them face so much stigma that when they come back to their community, it's very difficult to reintegrate. And it's even more difficult if it's a girl and if she returns with children born of sexual violence, she will likely be rejected by her family and her community. She may not be able to go to school or get married. So the CAFAC task force is a new task force. We're a group of organizations and individual experts who want to develop some tools, some guidance to respond effectively to the needs of children. We want to equip field actors with knowledge and skills to design and implement better programs. And we want to set up a task force, uh, oh, sorry, a platform where practitioners can share their good practices and lessons learned. And lastly, we would like to better coordinate our work. We have already started the work. Warchai UK is working on a community-based reintegration model. Plan International is working on a capacity building toolkit for field practitioners. And IRC is currently developing a parenting skills curriculum for parents of CAFAG. So if you want to know more about the great work that we do, come and join us. Thank you very much, Sandra. These children are in the front line or they're behind the scene providing sexual services or other related services. And then when that, those tasks are done with, they are, they're not accepted back home. What happened to them? 
we will come to your uh, room to know what happens to these particular children. Thank you, Sandra and team. We now move to Family Strengthening Task Force and uh, Eva and Sarah will enlighten us about that particular uh, task force. Welcome, Eva. Thank you, Atin, also for the lovely introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Eva Schmolachana. I'm from Warchild, Holland. And together with Sarah Homo from Save the Children, I'm co-leading the Family Strengthening Task Force. And actually, during this three-minute pitch, I'm not going to give you a pitch at all. I'm just going to tell you what it is that we would like to talk you through in the upcoming 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes will actually be a pitch for our session on October 15th. So what we would like to tell you in the upcoming 10 minutes uh, in the prime, um, in the room sessions is actually what we were hoping to do in 2020 uh, at the beginning of the year. And then of course, COVID happened and we had to adjust. And we will let you all know what we were able to do with these different circumstances, which are challenging for each and every one of us in more or less um, intensity. Um, we will highlight some of the webinars that we have been conducting in collaboration with several of our task force members on parenting and strengthening families. Um, and also would like to share with you on our attempts of collecting case studies in order to collect um, data and experience from the field and exchange and share that with the wider network. And also we have been updating resources and tools overviews for family strengthening activities and interventions in 2017. That was really up for an update. Uh, and we have adjusted our plans slightly due to COVID and the loss of our intern program um, initiatives, but we were able to, able to come up with a different approach and are now full swing in this. I'd like to talk you through this uh, during our 10 minute session. Thank you, Atin. Thank you, thank you, Eva. I'm glad I didn't try to pronounce your last name. Um, we all know that uh, the family is the, the strongest and the most immediate protection. If the family is strong, the kids are, are safe. If the family is not strong, uh, the kids are um, vulnerable to a lot of risks. So yeah, we are headed to, we are headed to room three to know more about how to support the family to be strong. Last but not least, uh, we are going to hear about Prevention Initiative 2019-2020, and I welcome Anne and Selina. Thank you so much, Achim. So Selina is going to share her screen. Yeah. So now we are going to present the uh, Prevention Initiative, hopefully in three minutes. Uh, next slide. Mm, yeah. So I'm Anne Love, Prevention Focal Point, uh, and I'm hired by Plan International. Uh, Selina is going to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'm Selina Jensen, and I'm the Focal Point for the Assessment, Measurement, and Evidence Working Group of the Alliance. So what is prevention? Um, prevention, uh, based on the CPMS definition, there are three levels of prevention. First, primary prevention aims at intervening before child protection risk occurs and addresses the root causes among the population. Then secondary prevention addresses the specific source of threats and or vulnerabilities of a child at high risk. And then tertiary prevention reduces the longer term impact of harm and the chance of recurring harm. Next slide. So why is prevention important? Um, so there is an increase, um, an increase in the awareness uh, that harm to girls and boys uh, can be prevented, especially in humanitarian settings, uh, because preventing harm before it occurs not only preserves child rights, but is also cost effective. Now, what is the prevention initiative? So the prevention initiative aims at developing key resources to support child protection practitioners to implement prevention actions in humanitarian settings. Uh, the prevention initiative comprises two components, uh, a programmatic component that I'm leading um, with a desk review, a framework of action, and a position paper. And besides, there is uh, a measurement component that Selina will be presenting. Over to you, Selina. Thanks, Anne-Laure. 
um, the measurement component, we're focusing specifically on developing a method to and tools to identify risk and protective factors, um, which will allow us to understand better the causes of, um, of negative um, outcomes for children. Back to you, Anne Lord. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to mute. Yeah, so uh, we will be discussing during uh, the next minute, uh, I mean, during the following session um, on prevention and, you know, your activities from your experience um, uh, in terms of prevention and program. So thank you so much, and we hope to see you there. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Selena. Uh, as, as teaching time, yeah. So we are all, uh, we, like I said at the beginning, we have uh, difficult choices. All the four topics are very, very key, but uh, yeah, we, we have to choose one. So um, if I may repeat again, learning and development, uh, room one, child, uh, children associated with armed forces and armed groups, group two, family strengthening task force, room three, and Prevention Initiative Room 4. So kindly leave this particular room and head, head, head towards the room that you would like to uh, be part of. Thank you very much and see you on the other side. <laughs>